Hey, what's going on you guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about my photo settings for my Canon EOS R. Everybody's settings are a little bit different. This is my settings and I wanna share them with you guys because if you guys are new and you guys just pick up this camera, these settings might really help you. So why don't we just go ahead and get into it. The first thing you guys have to do is make sure you guys have the right firmware. At the time of this video, the version is 1.8. You always gotta make sure you're on the highest version because they do make a lot of changes, which is pretty cool. Let's start at the very first menu. I always shoot in RAW. I only do RAW and then on the bottom for JPEG, I don't set anything on JPEG. I did that before where I had JPEG and RAW, so whenever I transfer things over, it's always double the picture. And I don't really use JPEG for anything. The cool part about my phone is that I can just transfer stuff over and I would accept RAW. Dual pixel RAW, I disable that. And then cropping is always on full. I don't do that like any of these right here. Um, it's always on full for the whole screen. And then image review. This is basically when you take a picture, do you wanna see the picture afterward? Like as soon as you press the shutter, it's gonna pop up the picture. For example, if you want two seconds, four seconds, or a hold. Hold is basically, it'll stay there until you click the shutter button. I leave it on off. I usually just keep shooting and if I wanna review the picture, I'll just go into the play menu. Release shutter without card, that's a big no. <laughs> the reason I leave this off is just to remind me that the card isn't in there. So go get your card because it's not gonna let you take pictures. It would suck if you go and take a picture of a bunch of stuff and then only to find out you had no card in there from the beginning. Lens aberration, I leave all this on on. I let the camera tell me what the lens aberration is, how to fix it like distortion and then digital lens optimizer. All these in color correction, aluminum color correction, my camera, is a Canon EOS R and I use RF lenses so the body and the camera knows how to work together. So I leave that all on. on. External speed light control, I don't do anything because we're not shooting with flash right now. And then exposure, I leave this on how it is. ISO speed setting, this is how it is, I don't change it. So right now the ISO is 640 and then what is the lowest you wanna go in the maximum. I just leave it how it is. And then also an auto. So if you ever had an auto ISO, how high do you want it? So right now I only want it to go up 12,800 and then the lowest is 100. And then auto lighting optimizer, I leave this where it is, I don't touch it. Highlight tone priority, I leave it off. Metering, I don't do anything with it, just how it is. Exposure simulation, this is pretty important. This is when you're taking a picture, when you look in a live view, like for example, you look in a live view here and let's say I change the ISO 640 to 800, you can see that it's changing as it shoots. That's the best part about mirrorless cameras that you can see that it changes. If you leave it on disable, look, I'm gonna raise my ISO up, the picture doesn't change. You see how that is? This would be more like a DSLR. Why would you use that? You would use that during flashes or when you're taking picture at nighttime. Those are the time you wanna take use this. So you can use this on my menu or just leave it on enable. Most of the time it's on enable. I don't use it off ever unless I'm doing flash. White balance, it's on Kelvin. My key thing is that you have to always get off auto. Okay, auto white balance is nice. So if you're doing street photography, maybe if you're doing some run and gun stuff, then sure, auto white balance is good. But if you're trying to learn what white balance is and how the color temperature is, set it on Kelvin, challenge yourself, because eventually you'll start understanding what's the zone that most of the time it'll be on. I've noticed that 4,500 to 6,000 is the zone. I didn't know that before, but now shooting on Kelvin, I do. 4500 is actually really cool too, like code as in code. If I did higher, then it'll be hotter. And I didn't know that before either, so challenge yourself. And these, you can use these as well. See how daylight is 5200, shade is 7000, cloudy. All this right here is gonna tell you what it is. So if you wanna learn and study that to help you in the future, that can be a great help. Customize, so right here, let's say I was shooting in this room only, then I would use this white balance here and then it will be right here in custom. So now, for example, this room that I'm shooting in, this is my main room. I always shoot all my videos in here, so my custom white balance is in this room. So whenever I'm in this room, I use custom and it will be perfectly white balance each and every time. And you only can set one, 
So just make sure you set it to the one you shoot the most or you can change it during your shoots. White balance shift bracket, don't do anything. Color space, sRGB. Picture style, I leave it on standard. The reason why I leave it on standard is because we got a Canon for Canon colors for being part of that. And also, you know, they talk about all these other camera colors. Canon color looks amazing to me. I can leave it on neutral, I could, but then I go inside Lightroom and I'll start editing more to it. So I leave it on standard. Now I get the Canon colors and then I just adjust it a little bit. So it works out great. That's why I leave it on standard. Long exposure, I don't do anything with it. This I don't either, dust delete data, I don't. Touch shutter, I disable this because if you touch the screen and it takes a picture, I don't want to accidentally ever touch the screen and it takes a picture, but it's up to you guys. Touch shutter is pretty cool. Multiple exposure, I do off until I kind of want to do it, but right now I don't plan on doing it yet. It's more like an effect. Same thing with HDR, it's good for landscape because you get the shadow, the highlights and everything. A lot of uh, real estate photography uses this. If you guys are into doing that, that should be a good option. Then anti-flicker, I leave it off. Silent live view shooting, I leave it on mode one. Now we're done with the first page. We are going on to autofocus. So this will affect all of your autofocus. Autofocus operation, one shot, okay? Or servo, servo is continuous autofocus. And then one shot is just one shot. <laughs> autofocus, method right now usually i leave it on face tracking all the time but for right now for this purpose we'll leave it on one point and then these are a little bit different i'll talk to you guys more about it in another video because it's a long video and it'll probably be its own video and i think it'll be great but right now i leave it on point autofocus frame size normal and then continuous autofocus this one i leave on disable this is different than servo this continuous autofocus is like, let's say you leave it on navel, you leave it here and the camera is constantly autofocus. So if I move this back here, oh, focus to the backseat of word cannon. Look, so autofocus for you all the time. That kind of drains the battery because it's always doing it. And then sometimes if it's like out of focus hunting, it will continue to hunt over and over. I just leave it on disable and then I'll press the shutter when I need to. Touch to drag. This touch to and drag autofocus, I leave it on enable because sometimes when I'm looking through the viewfinder, I just use my fingers to touch the screen and it moves the autofocus around. I use positioning method as absolute and then active touch area as top right. So when you're looking through the viewfinder with your right eye, you can just touch it with your thumb and it'll move around. The absolute part, try which one you guys like better, absolute or relative. Once you guys take a look at it, you'll know right away. Focus guide, I leave that on. Tracking sensitivity, I leave that at zero. Accelerate zero, autofocus point, auto switching, I leave it at one. I actually want it to be just a tiny bit faster than it already is. And then lens electronic, I leave it off. Autofocus beam, I leave it off. If I ever wanna take a picture at nighttime, I don't want this red beam just flashing. People might, it's kind of weird. This one, one shot autofocus release. And I just leave it just to focus. Whenever it focus, it'll release. Lens drive when autofocus is impossible. So continue to search. I always leave that on. So I want it to continue to search till it finds it. And if it can't find it, I'll do something about it. But I want to know that the camera is working. Limit autofocus method. So these are the autofocus that I want. The face, the square, this expanded autofocus, the expanded autofocus area, and a zone autofocus. These I leave off, horizontal and vertical. If you guys wanna pick those, then you can. Those are just mine. Orientation, I leave it just like this. And then initial service autofocus point, I leave it on auto. Okay, we're in the play menu. The first page is pretty much self-explanatory, you know. Um, I'll go on to second page, resizing, those are normal. I'd leave them all, you know, just regular. The third page though, the third page has a couple things I do wanna change and a couple things I do wanna talk about. Playback information display. So here, it has 10 different info options that you guys can choose from. So let's say you took this picture, you see when you press play, you have two options, okay? You have this or you have this, okay? This is, it shows as a little bit underexposed, there's a lot of dark areas and there's a lot of white areas, the table and the camera. And then you hit this, you'll have the menu and then you'll have this with the other menu. Play around with it, see what you guys need and then you guys can always adjust what you need. Highlight alert, I leave it on enable. Just for like, uh, if any of the highlights are blown out, it will let me know. 
autofocus point display. I don't leave it on, I turn it off. If you guys don't know what it is, here's an example. Let me show you that I'll take a picture of this Canon word and then I'll press play and check this out. There's an autofocus square right there that shows the Canon. You see how it's blinking black and white too? That's the highlight alert saying that that letter, those words is about to be blown out or is blown out. Autofocus, so I leave that off. Playback grid. If you guys want like the rule of thirds and things like that on your playback when you're looking at your picture, I leave it off. Let's record time, I leave enable, double two, and that's about it for the play menu. We're moving on to this, the wrench. Folders are the same file, numbers, continuous, name, auto, auto rotate. I'm gonna actually have it off because sometimes it doesn't know that I want a vertical picture or not, so I'm just gonna turn that off. Eco mode, I have off, okay? Power saving display. So I have the display for five minutes. If I don't use the camera, the display turn off in five minutes. Auto power, power off in 30 seconds. I leave the display, here it is. I change it to what I need. Display off in three minutes, auto power off in three minutes, viewfinder off in one minute. We move on here to the next one. Uh, touch control to standard, and then I don't want it to be sensitive or anything. Accidentally touch is the worst. Beep, I turn it off. I don't like to touch it and it keeps hearing this beeping sound. <laughs> Battery info, here it is. Okay, sensor cleaning, you press it, it'll clean the sensor. Um, those are normal. Shooting info display, here's screen info display. So this is when you're shooting. This is when the three menu that I showed you. Okay, these are the three menus I want. I wanna see all my settings, and then I wanna see the histogram, and then I wanna see it clear sometimes. The cool thing about this is that you can make a change to it. If you press info, you can get rid of something. I don't need this, the leveling, the electronic leveling. So I don't need that. Um, I'm gonna go down to okay. Make sure you press okay or else it's not gonna save. And then I'm cool. And then this is viewfinder info. So this is the same thing, just in viewfinder. Okay, I'm gonna turn this one on because I wanna see the histogram, but I'm gonna edit it as the same. I'm gonna turn off the leveling and now I'm gonna go ahead and save that, okay. You find a vertical display, so if you turn your camera vertical, it'll switch to vertical everything, which is pretty neat. Grid, so if you are new and you wanna practice the rule of third, this right here is a great way because you'll see squares here. So if you wanna adjust your camera in a certain direction, like here, and put the Canon word on the rule of third, this right here, and then you know move the focus over here and take a picture. You can do that and it'll help you practice and get your eyes used to what the rule of third looks like and where it is. But for me, I'm going to turn it off. I've been using it for a while. Histogram, I do brightness, I don't do RGB and display size, I do small. I just need to see where is it at and that's it. Focus distant display when focusing and then in feet because I'm American and we're just weird like that. Focusing, so like when you're focusing on this, it'll show you on the bottom if you notice where it says three, infinity, and feet, it'll show you where that is away from us. It's kind of neat. So then when you're using manuals, you can see where it is if you ever want to switch it to manual. But that's up to you. I mean, you can turn it off too. <laughs> display info, I use smooth. I don't want to do power saving. Quick movement subject, I display smoothly. I like that. It's all about quality. Viewfinder. I don't, I do display one. I don't understand this at all. So display one, display settings. Right now I'm shooting for video a lot. So I have it in manual and I have it in screen. But if you guys do it in auto, it'll auto switch for you guys. I'm gonna explain this in a minute. But let's continue on to here. These are all the exposure menus right here. I leave all this how it is. I don't touch anything. Same things here, set shutter speed range. I don't touch anything, I leave it where it is. This though, if you guys want to scroll normal, like to the right, I leave the control ring and rotation all on normal. RF lens manual focus ring is the ring that you have on the RF lenses, the third ring, and then I leave it on link to rotation degree. So instead of like, if you rotate really fast, it doesn't move faster. This is normal no matter how much you rotate. Customize button. Here I have it on autofocus. Record button is record. MF is gonna be screen brightness. So if I go shoot outside, I wanna see my screen, I can click that. This is if I shoot nighttime and I don't know what the menu is saying, it'll show me it with the light in the back. Mode, when you change from video to photo, the mode is really quick and fast. Autofocus on, you have 
depth of field preview. I have that as zoom and then lens autofocus. And then on my directional buttons, I have it to change the autofocus. Customize button. Okay, the front finger right there will always be aperture. That's just how I like it. I'm always so used to that having the aperture and I'm just stuck that way. The thumb will always be shutter speed and the ISO will always be in the front. I'm just, it's just so easy for me now and I'm used to it in every camera. That's how I changed it. And then this MF bar, that's the slide bar you have. And I made a video about this that I use Kelvin on it. And I want you guys to just go ahead and watch it. I'll link it up here on the top. And go ahead and click that. The MF bar is amazing. If you guys use it correctly, it's really useful. I changed my Kelvin that way and it's super fast. I leave this all normal and never touched it. So we retract lens power off is on. Going back to custom shooting mode. If you guys wanted to change a single menu because you use it a lot, then you can put it on a custom shooting menu. And then whenever you turn it to the custom shooting menu right here, you can see it and use it right there. So. That's where that is. Save whatever you guys want to shoot, but the main one should always be manual and the secondary should be those custom buttons. All right, that concludes this. Congratulations on your new camera and I hope you guys enjoyed this camera as much as I do. All right, I hope you guys liked this video. If you guys did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you guys didn't, just make sure you still hit that thumbs up button or just don't hit anything at all. All right, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.